God is good. Do me a favor. That person next to you, give them a hug and tell them God's not through with you yet. Mm. Now you got to do it stronger than that. Give them a hug and tell them I'm not playing with you. Uh-uh, you got to say it louder than that. Tell them, I am not playing with you. God is not through with you yet. I think God deserves a praise for that one. I'm excited about all of this. My God, they put me up behind all of that. And they expect me to do something. If I was at church, I, at my church, I'd just go to dance. God has been kind to all of these preachers, everybody that preceded us. I think you ought to give them a real good ovation. Then you have to clap for the Word Network. We made it possible. And then my good friend and brother, Pastor Jamal Bryant. No, 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 that was too lightweight. I said Jamal Bryant. God has blessed him tremendously for the years that I've known him. Before he started all of this, God has been kind to him. And then working right, right with him. We must applaud this young man. He's still young. God has been kind to him. And he's working right with Jamal, Pastor Bryant. And I think the two of them make a good team. And I think you ought to salute him. George Bloomer. Oh, come on, do better than that. And those of you that are not clapping, you have to clap because they made all this possible through the Word Network, and we have to appreciate them. Now, clap your hands for all of those preachers that preached. Every one of them. And then they would put the lady up and let her just wreck everything and then sit down like she didn't do nothing. She's all right, that's power. And I thank God for all of the wives, and I must thank God for my wife who came with me, Lady Lori Campbell, wave your hand, baby. That's the love of my life. Now, I'm not gonna be long. Um, I'm on an assignment, and I wanna finish this now. They gave me this word and said, this is what they want me to talk about. And that was when Jesus concluded and said, it is finished. Grab somebody by the hand and say, it is finished. Now, that same hand, touch that person again and tell them, I want to talk to you about the significance of finishing. The significance of finishing. Jesus speaks a very powerful thing when he says those three words, it is finished. One of the problems that we run into today, too many people start good but they never finish. There are many of you here tonight who've gone through some things and you know you started, but there's a process 
that you have to go through in starting and finishing. You dream, you visualize, and you say to yourself, this is what I want to do. And most people step into stuff without first counting up the cost. Anybody can start, but it takes persistence and consistency to finish. Because once the enemy finds out that you started, he assigns extra demons to keep you from finishing. So you've got so many people in church who were great starters, but they didn't have what it takes to finish. Now, I know a lot of people get quiet, but you got to understand, anybody can start, but it takes a strong person to finish. Jesus stepped on the scene, and when he says that, when you read that in the Gospel according to John, nobody speaks more about this than John. Luke is the beloved physician. Luke deals with healings more so than the others. But John looks at this thing through the eyes of love. He was with Jesus from inception. Jesus chose him, and he was a member of the inner circle. Catch this, if you will. The inner circle consisted of three. Peter, James, and John. The three of them were close to Jesus. But out of the three, Peter was the one that spoke the most and always spoke out of order. <laughs> always out of order because he would say things out of just boastfully saying things because he was in the inner circle. So you always have to watch people in your inner circle that talk too much. Because a lot of people you like may like you for a season. But they're there for that season. And when their season is up, they have to go. And you don't want to keep them beyond their season. Because the longer you keep them, the worse they'll get. And when they start getting too bad, they become envious of you. And they end up not liking you. I know you can't say man because they sit next to you, but come on, just nod your head. And you're dealing with people who are really jealous of you. And envious of what you're capable of doing. That's why you have to be careful who you talk to. You can't tell everybody what you're going through and you cannot tell everybody where you're going. And you can't tell everybody the kind of relationship that you and the Lord has. Jesus was surrounded. He chose 12. And out of the 12, three was his inner circle. And that was Peter, James, and John. But Jesus chose Peter because Peter was quick to speak. And you notice something else about Peter. Peter always carried a sword, and he would use it. I guess I got nobody here to read the Bible now. He carried a sword, and he didn't mind using it. And he stuck close to Jesus as long as he was in a comfort zone. Be careful of people who always want to be in the comfort zone and not willing to submit to your vision. Can I get one amen in the house? Touch somebody and tell them, watch that person that's real close to you. I know y'all can't touch them because you don't want them to know you just found them out. But everybody that sticks around you are there. Most of them are there for a season, for a reason. You have to recognize in your position when their season is up. And when their season is up, you got to find a way that you can walk away without hurting their feelings. Because if you walk away and hurt their feelings, they will not be a friend, they will turn into an enemy. And nothing is worse than having a friendly enemy around you that you've allowed to get into your inner circle. 
there is failure and there is a failure in starting something that you cannot finish to finish means to complete what you started one of the biggest problems with those of us in church is we start stuff but we never finish it because we're hard to please instead of trying to please God we try to please people People don't have the last word. God has it. Jesus' association was with Jesus. Now, understand Jesus was called and placed by God. And this is the mystery of this because he says here, it is finished. Where is he coming from? What is finished? What did he finish? Number one, you have to go back into what Jesus went through understand he was called he was born but he was not born of just the similitude of man because when Jesus was born he was placed in the womb of Mary without a sexual relationship that was never an entering in with the conception of Jesus that was just an overshadowing every woman that's pregnant is impregnated from the bottom up Mary was not impregnated from the bottom up. She was impregnated from the top down. So she was a virgin when Jesus was born. She was a virgin when he was conceived. And she was a virgin after he got here. I'm not getting no help in here at all. That is the mystery of the birth. Because the blood of Jesus was the blood of God. There was no intermingling of the man's blood into the womb of Mary that would create or cause Jesus to be born. That was only an overshadowing. And when Jesus was born, nothing fed him. He was not fed with an umbilical cord. But there was nothing connected from Mary to Jesus. He was placed inside of her and fed by God. Mary didn't have to feed him. He was never breastfed and he didn't have a bottle to suck from. But when he was placed in the womb of Mary, it was, he was placed there by the Holy Ghost. And being born like that, when he came forth, Mary never felt a pain. Because there was nothing that had to be cut from her to give him life. Had she fed him, he would have came here with the weakness of man. But the Bible said he was tempted at all point like as we, but yet without sin. He didn't have to sin because he who knew no sin became sin. Not because of what he was eating, but because he took on the form of man. And from that point, he had to be both God and man. In other words, could nothing kill him except he says, I'm ready to go. That's the miracle of Christianity. I don't care what nobody says, we have a very unique relationship with God because Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Here he is and he sits there, he goes through the misery, he finishes the process. But the first thing he did before he finished it, follow this if you will, was he had to go to Gethsemane. Note what happens in Gethsemane. In Gethsemane, he had to pray to bring everything about him subject to the will of God. The process is moving forward. But in order for him to go to Calvary, he had to go through Gethsemane. Had he not been to Gethsemane, I don't know what would have happened when he got to the courtroom. But the first process was Gethsemane. At Gethsemane, he submitted himself to the will of God. In the garden, I guess don't nobody read about that. In the garden, Jesus had to pray out of himself. He prayed until he had to bring himself to submit to the will of God. In the midst of his prayer, he had to pray three hours. The first hour, he got frustrated. He had to bring that flesh under control. The first hour frustration took over and he got up, went back to the disciples and had an attitude with them and said, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? 
He knew then, I ain't ready for that cross. So he goes back into the garden the second time and prays again until he brings his body subject to the will of God. So many people walk out of the will of God and do things your way. And when you do it your way, you always mess up. But when Jesus submitted to the will of God, he came back the third time and said, sleep on. When God fits you, you can walk up to your enemies and say, keep on doing what you're doing. You can walk up to people that don't like you and say, keep on hating me. How can you do that? It's because you're out of yourself and you're moving into the will of God. You don't get mad at people who don't like you simply because you're not on their level. When God delivered you, he puts you on a whole nother level. They can say whatever they want to say, but they don't control you because greater is he that's in you. Ah, I dare you to touch somebody and say, it's going to get better. Oh, half of y'all won't even touch nobody. Touch them again and say, it's going to get better. What does it mean, finished? Finished means complete. It's over. It's done. So he does that. I'm almost through. He does that. He goes back and he sees what's going on and tells them, sleep on. Then the second thing he does is the significance of finishing is first he had to go to Gethsemane. Too many believers are not going to Gethsemane. You're still operating in your flesh and your emotions will cause you to miss the mark. You have to have a relationship with God where your enemies won't even bother you. They can say what they want about you, but they don't control you. And the only way you're going to get that, you got to make a stop in Gethsemane. You got to learn how to pray out of yourself and bring your emotions under control. Until your emotions don't control you, you control your emotions. So what does he do? He gets out there and he goes on. And then after leaving Gethsemane, he does something amazing. He goes to the courtroom. This is the second stage. He goes to the courtroom. Why does he go to the courtroom and why? How in the world does he survive? Everybody needs to catch this because you're dealing with stuff today that if you don't have a pit stop by Gethsemane, you will never survive. Too many people are frustrated, angry, upset because people get on your nerves. They push your button whenever they get ready. If you go to Gethsemane, they can't find your button. Now this is deep because if you notice the travelings of Jesus when he leaves out from Gethsemane, he goes to the courtroom because there he exemplifies the power of God in his life. Amazing thing happens in prayer. You can pray until you get an anointing. You can pray until you can handle what people say you'll never survive. Prayer does one of two things. Prayer will either move the situation or fix you to stay in it until God get ready to bring you through. You have to be prepared through prayer. I don't care how much you read, how much word you know, you need a prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, some stuff will come up on you and you will end up with the spirit of Peter before Jesus was crucified. You'll cut somebody out and then cut their ear off. But when you got a relationship, I don't care what they do, they can't find your button. 
simply because you got a relationship with God. I'm looking at some of y'all who know God has brought you through some stuff. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you wouldn't be sitting in here right now. But oh, by the grace of God, look at you now. And I'm here to tell you, it's about to get better. I wish I had somebody here that had a relationship with God. You can touch somebody and tell them everything in your life is about to get better. Oh no, you can't say it like that. You got to say it with some vigor. Grab them by the hand and tell them everything in your life is about to get better. Oh, I feel that thing in my bones now. What do you mean, Brother Preacher? God takes all of us through a process. The process is not designed to destroy you. It's designed to prepare you. What God is about to do for some of y'all is going to blow your mind. You've been through so much until you should have backslid last year. But you made it to this year. And God told me to tell you, it's about to get better. Ah, I wish somebody here believed God. Holler real loud, it's about to get better. Ah, some of y'all ain't saying nothing. Holler real loud and say, it's about to get better. Your ministry is getting ready to shift. Your gift is getting ready to shift. Your patience is about to be lifted. Everything damnable that the devil did to you last year and the first of this year recognize it's spring winter is over I don't care how cold it is outside that's just winter trying to hold on to you but God said I'm changing your season and the reason I'm gonna change your season is because you've been cold long enough I got something for you that what you've been through, you're going to appreciate it. You don't let nobody dictate to you how bad you're going to be. Just let them know if God be for me, who then can be against me? I dare you to grab somebody and just holler real loud at me and say, better. Everybody don't touch nobody. Don't even force them to touch it. Don't even look at them. Let them go because they got a bad connection anyway. But if you really believe God, grab somebody and tell them it's going to get better. Now touch three people and say better, better, better. Woo! Somebody need to hear that. They need to hear it real bad. You don't know what kind of attack they've been under. I dare you to grab them by the hand and say, I'm not playing with you. God said it's going to get better. Hey. What do you mean, brother preacher? And I'm closing with this. Where does he take them? He's in the garden. Finishing. He says it is finished. But the process is over. That's why he said it's finished. What he came here to do was finishing. He couldn't start nothing and not finish it. Whatever you start, you got to finish. Distractions come, but distractions are part of your process. Friends leave you, but they are a part of the process. They talk about you, but they are a part of the process. They love you today and can't stand you tonight. That's a part. Somebody know where I'm coming from. Whatever happened to you last year was a part of your process. The stuff you went through, the mountains, the valleys, the lies, the disappointment, the bitterness was all a part of the process. But you know what? It's springtime. Something is about to happen now. 
God's about to shift some stuff in your favor. Why? Because you passed the test. All of the liars that lied on you, you got to let them know it's finished now. You couldn't kill me and you can't do nothing with me because God said, I got better coming. I wish somebody would believe that. I dare you to touch about three people and tell them better, better, better. Uh-uh. You got to say that with some vigor. Tell them I'm not playing with you. Everything is about to get better. Give them a hug even if they don't want you to touch them because they're jealous of you. They're envious of you. Hug them and tell them it's about to get better. I see you in the spirit. There's some stuff that you've been dealing with. You've been in some amount of a carnal state because there are things that happen that you don't understand. They didn't understand Jesus. But what they didn't know, he was on an assignment. His assignment was just about finished. And when he said these words, it is finished. My assignment this phase of it is finished what you gonna do now jesus well i got an appointment i gotta keep i'm finished up here i've already done what my assignment called for me to do i fulfilled my assignment it's finished now i paid the price i've gone to Calvary they whipped me they beat me blood ran out but what they didn't know is that something about my blood that's not like anybody else's blood for my blood is the blood of God it wasn't the blood of Joseph but it's God's blood put in my veins for a purpose for a reason and I came to tell somebody God got you going through for a reason everything that you dealt with this year is for a reason God's getting ready to shift you from where you were to something better you've been perplexed been under attack and the devil thought you would never make it this far everybody needs to know you've got to get engaged in spiritual warfare you got to fight that devil fight the oppression fight the depression fight the stress fight the spirit of hatred let the devil know whatever you got planned for me god's gonna block it tell somebody it's about to get better everybody in ministry you're under attack the letter killeth but the spirit makes a lie get into god's work let the devil know whatever god's got for me i'm gonna hold on until it materialize you ain't worth me losing my anointing over you've been under attack so much and so you can't even talk about it for the more you talk the more the devil does to you but he messed up tonight he lets you come to church on a friday night to find out that whatever i've been through as of tonight it's finished i'm through with it i'm not gonna worry about it some of y'all know god you've got a relationship with him but you've been under such a strong attack until he's knocked you down he made you doubt god but he made a mistake you're in the right place at the right time god's getting ready to shift you from out of your suffering and 
take you to another level a level of praise because when you are secure in what God is doing you can praise him until God shifts it I double dare you grab somebody by the hand and say get out of that depression get out of that stress and start praising God for God's getting ready to blow your mind the devil don't like it but God's got something better for you it ain't over yet God's shifted it God's getting ready to boost you with a greater anointing you've been too content but God said I gotta stir you up I gotta let you know that this is not the end I got better for you everybody that know there's a call on your life don't be scared to express it grab somebody by the hand and say get out of that pitiful state get out of that stress and come on with me now ask me say where you going say I'm going to the next level but I feel God in this house tonight I feel the presence of the Lord right now there's better coming for you the process is just about over you made it through last year January tried to knock you out of it February tried to make you depressed March said it ain't gonna get no better but April is the mountain of spring things are about to spring forward God's about to blow your mind everything you lost God's gonna restore it everything you've been through God's gonna replenish it have I got a witness here grab somebody and say come on you're not in this by yourself God's got your back God's going to deliver God's going to elevate God's going to saturate God's going to heal you got God's attention God told me to tell you hold on just a little while longer hold on oh hold on it's going to get better if you believe it Steps and say better. Oh. You better grab somebody and say, I'm not playing with you. God told me to grab you and say, get ready. There's a shift coming. God's getting ready to restore everything you lost. Let God have his way. Take seven steps. Let the devil know it's over now. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. This really gonna get better. Yeah. Tell somebody. It's really gonna get better. Tell your neighbor. to get better if you didn't like me last year you gonna hate me this year because God's got me he's blessing me it's about to get better it's finished it's done I delivered you I saved you I filled you while you sitting down looking pitiful like it ain't over yet it is over God said it's over I got better for you some of y'all won't even touch nobody but grab somebody else and say come on now get out of that depression get out of that loneliness take a walk with me say, I got you I 
got your back. God told me to take it. It's going to get better. Some of y'all won't even touch nobody. But you better put your arm around them and tell them it's going to get better. Yeah, better. to happen. Speak those things that are not as though they were. I'm about to get better. My health getting better. My ministry getting better. My home getting better. My children getting better. My relationship getting better. Speak those things that are not as though they were. Some of y'all won't even touch nobody. Grab them by the hand and say it ain't over yet. Say, I'm sorry for keep grabbing you. But God told me to touch you. Because when I get blessed, I want you to get blessed. So where you going? Say, I'm going to another level. Hey, I really got to close. I, 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 I really know the Lord is able. Oh, he's able. in control I think you ought to just tell somebody God said it's going to get better oh you won't even touch nobody but it's really going to get better because we've been made endure for a night but early in the morning you got some joy coming will you hug somebody and say God through with you here it's about to get better hey, 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 hey. I'm about to take my seat now but I feel a move of God in my soul whatever the devil tried to do it didn't work God still got you under his vision he's gonna fix it for you I got you to touch about three people and say it's really going to get better. Some of y'all won't even touch nobody. You need to hug them and say I'm not playing with you. It's about to get better. Your ministry is about to get better. Tell somebody it's about to get better. Tell It's really gonna get better. Uh, Everybody just stand up for a minute. I'm about to stand on your feet. Wherever you are, come on, stand up. And I want you to do this last thing for me. And I'm through. It's finished. Come on, get up. Stand up. The Bible said the power of life and death is in your tongue. I need you to do this because this is what the Lord has given me. The attack has been so intense. Like never before. We have never experienced the kind of demonic attacks that's leveled against us now. I want you to forget about everything and everybody. Concentrate on what God is getting ready to do for you. 
Every preacher, every minister need to know this. This is the day of the great falling away. People are leaving their pulpits. They don't want to preach anymore because they can't handle the stress. But the Lord gave me this as I was on my way here, sit on the plane and the Lord spoke and said, if they believe me and trust me, I will make the darkness light. Wherever you are, I want you to forget about everything that happened to you and focus on the next level. Some of y'all in here, you carry an anointing that has been lying dormant because so much pressure has been against you until you don't feel the joy Preachers were preaching under stress. We're preaching under all kinds of heaviness and weight. But tonight, on this Friday, after this, you shall live. You're going to live. I don't care what they said to you after this. You shall live. Everything is about to shift for believers because when the attack comes, it makes believers pray. You don't run from trouble, you pray. God is up to something. Grab somebody by the hand. Come on, grab them by the hand and get ready to speak into their lives. And I'm through, but I feel God in this place. It's a good day. Grip that hand. Now you got to speak to them. First thing I do is pray for your flesh. It's crucified. Grip that hand now. And I want you to speak into that person's life. Colonel got to go. You got to get spiritual. Hold that hand. Look at him and say this to him. Say, I don't know. I don't have a clue as to what you've been going through but I do know this much God got you here holding my hand because as of this night everything I've been dealing with and everything you've been dealing with God's about to move it when I speak this into your life Get ready for the shift. Now holler at him and say, it's over. Now holler at him and say, power. 